Hey, friends, family, and strangers to this episode of Rushed Vibes. Rushed Vibes, 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 Vibes. I feel like an echo effect was needed. I'm Jess, Rushed Vibes, and this is... Dude. No, I'm I'm David. Sorry, I, I never know if you're going to bring me in or not. So I just kind of sit here. You just got to be ready for waiting, the, for the waiting assist. anxiously. To I, see what's going to happen. I, I I anticipate us having a disagreement in this this episode. So I um I'm just starting. I'm starting off frustrated with you. <laughs> wow. So I haven't even done anything yet, and you're already frustrated with yeah, me. Yeah, because I know I know you will. You know I will what? Frustrate me or upset me. How do you know that? I just know. I can feel it in my spirit. I can feel the vibe of frustration. That is not. And it's radiating. That is not a vibe. It's radiating off of you. It's a negative vibe. Whatever, man. How are you? I'm doing well. This is episode eight. I know I misspoke last uh, episode and said it was six. It was actually number seven because I forgot we did a bonus rush vibes episode so we are bonus. on episode eight of almost, rush vibes we're rush, double digits rush vibes is eight episodes Ocho. old and that's pretty awesome because in the preparation stages of launching this podcast there are moments where i didn't think that we would actually launch because somebody was dragging their feet oh Okay, I thought he was going to put it on me because no. when no. we would meet with our um, our consultant, she would she Missy. You can say her name. I know. I just wanted to shout be out to all, Missy. all official. She'd be like, "Okay, so we're launching Wednesday," and I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like I wouldn't even know, and then Wednesday would come, and I wouldn't even say anything, and and we didn't launch. Yeah. Um, but we did eventually. Just eventually, because we're here and we're eight episodes in. Eight. That's such a big deal. I'm actually very proud of us. Let's let's toast to eight. Yay. Mm. Since we've toast toasted, go ahead and let everybody know what your concoction is tonight. Um, this is actually one of my favorites. I made it back when I was, you know, Jackie of all trades and I was managing the bar at a nightclub. Jackie of all trades. I caught that. That's clever. Yeah. I've been, I've, I've said it for years. I've never said it to you. Yeah. Nah, it must've been on autopilot. Anyway, um, back Damn, when I was crazy. Jackie of all trades, about two years ago, I assisted, uh, in the management of a nightclub and there was one night it was back when Crown Peach just rolled out and you could start getting it into um, accounts and or establishments, excuse me. And somebody asked me to make them a drink with it. And I mixed Crown Peach, pineapple juice, orange juice, and a little bit of peach schnapps and came out with this cocktail and it was amazing and it kind of just became my signature um to the point where like someone would say oh someone wants a drink with crown peach and then i'd have to like get off of the floor and go and make it behind the bar even though i'm like trying to run bottles between the different bars so yeah i i should come up with a name for it but it's it's actually really it's really good i it's one of my favorites when i have pineapple and orange juice nice i'm what just drinking on? cognac cognac shout out to my my big brother Donald, I believe he is a uh, he is consumer a, of cognac. He is. I remember um, one of the first like big brother, little sister moments he and I had mm-hmm. was when I opened up a bottle of Hennessy Pure White, and we we partook together. And I remember I felt that that moment in my in my heart, and I still to this day that was I treasure that. It's good to know you guys share such a moving, heartfelt moment. Yeah. Hennessy Pure White. Hennessy, bringing people together. Bring, <laughs> and tearing some people apart. <laughs> but, uh, we, won't, we, won't, we won't get there. We won't, we won't talk about that yet. So, what's new? What's going on with you? Um, what's going on with me? Nothing. Okay. Because it is an extended weekend. Mm-hmm. And I have enjoyed my downtime. We sent the kids to the grandparents. So we had some time to clean. 
even though we know they're starting tomorrow. We brought them back home tonight. Starting tomorrow, they're probably just going to trash it, trash everything. And I feel like it's probably a reflection on us as parents that we let our kids just run amok and, and trash the house and we complain on social media about it. But um, I feel like this is a common struggle among parents, mm-hmm. relatively young, new parents. You know, we've only been at this thing, at this thing for five years. So we're, we're still trying to uh, you know, figure out how to keep the kids from making a mess. And I think we've settled on just throwing away all the toys. I was going to throw away the kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> And you know, what's funny when we, before we left to take the girls, Solace was saying, oh, you're going to clean. So you're going to clean. I can't wait to see what you, how you clean when I get back. Which in itself is a very obnoxious thing statement for a five-year-old to make so she comes in the house this evening david takes her sister up to bed because she's already asleep on the car ride and she goes oh let me go see how you clean the playroom and mind you we really only clean the common areas that we reside in so we didn't touch her playroom her play slash toy room or her bedroom or her bedroom so she goes over to the playroom and i was like uh we didn't clean that and she was she looked so genuinely disappointed that it was still dirty so then she was like, oh, well, let me go see how you cleaned my bedroom. And I was like, I was like, Chick, we didn't, we didn't clean that either. Um, and I, I think she was genuinely looking forward to coming back to clean spaces that she would just trash in a matter of hours, if that, yeah. if it even takes that. So it's, it's very interesting that at such a young age, her expectation that we, we clean up for her and her excitement to see the work that we put in on the mess that she made. Uh, yeah. it's definitely, you gotta love having children, but, uh, I, our hopes are that Savi won't take after her sister and be messy. It's not looking great. No, it's not. But, um, I, I'm still, I'm still hopeful that there's a chance she might be our clean kid and then we can eventually get new furniture and in new decor that we're not fearful will be ruined by tiny people. Yeah. In other news, we still have our Christmas tree up. We do. It is. And actually all of our Christmas decor, actually a few stockings. We've lost a few stockings. They were pulled down. Um, but that's as much progress as we've made Yeah. to, to Christmas de decorating. But you know, you pitched the idea of, leaving the tree up year yeah. round and then just decorating it according to the, to the, the holidays. Season, yeah. So let's see if we're going to do that. So yeah. we are, if I said, if it's still up by February 1st, I'm probably going to raid the dollar store and do some like DIY hearts and crafts. Oh, see how I did that hearts and crafts. I wasn't even trying get it hearts. Cause it rhymes with arts, hearts and crafts. Okay. Good job, I, Jess. I know somebody got a giggle out of it. And for you, I appreciate you. We'll do some hearts and craft and we'll decorate the tree and with hearts and pictures and candies and whatever else are popular for Valentine's Day. Usually a new tradition that I started is I make 14 red hearts and each heart has a different affirmation for solace and we tape each heart on her door every day in February, starting February 1st. So I never took down last year's, <laughs> So they're still, they're still up there, but I don't um, think she, she probably doesn't even know that they're there. To she be probably has stopped noticing, but I, I thought it was a cute thing to do and she really enjoyed it. Uh, and now that Savi's here, we'll probably do the same onto her door as well. But you know, just 14, affirmations you know you are beautiful you are brilliant you are loved just something different for each day for the first 14 days of february so that's that's something we do and we'll probably incorporate that to our holiday tree that's what we'll call it holiday tree our nice. holiday so tree. if any of our family or friends are, are watching this and you know it's like june july and you happen to come over assuming you know covid has has uh, subsided a little bit and you see a tree with flags, <laughs> American flags draped across it, you know that that's our 4th of July tree. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so what I'll do be... in March. I'll put, for Ghana's independence, I'll put just all the Ghanaian stuff that I have. Shout out tree. to Ghana. Whoop, whoop. Our future uh, retirement 
It's kind of hot. It's kind of hot. Well, I was imagine by the time I'm retired, I won't really care about. Oh, you gonna care about? <laughs> you gonna care right, about I've never, heat. I've never experienced the, uh, the African heat. Yeah, it's. I've, um, been to, I've been to Mexico, but I have not been to West Africa yet. So it and I can't you speak know the, Ghana is actually geographically the closest country to the equator. So we we hold that. Which little known, little known history little known, fact. Yeah. Um, so just just so you know, if you're ever watching or on a game show and you get that whatever you win, I expect a certain, you know, contribution. You're always trying to get percentages or royalties I, from I somebody. Mean, if you don't That's ask, why I, I'm scared to shout you, brands out on the podcast now because Jessica's always trying to receive. If you don't ask, how are you gonna get it? So That's true. So you never know. Someone might be like, he, she deserves a, a percentage. So um, Ghana is a different kind of heat that I've ex- I've only experienced that type of heat in Ghana, the Dominican Republic, and Mexico. Mexico. I tell people this all the time. Mexico. I had gotten my hair blown out to go to Ghana, uh, and the thing with Ghana is it's not like an American airport where you. You step onto the tarmac. No, I mean, not the tarmac. The uh, it's not the terminal. What's that? The, the jetway. Gang, jetway. Maybe gangway. The way. Jetway. The thing that comes from the tunnel. The, yeah, the, the tunnel. The, yeah, the tunnel the, way. The jet to uh, the. It's gonna bother me because I know terminal. there's a formal word for it. Um, so you step you step off the plane onto like this most epic, the, pretty much the staircase you see the president to get on Air Force One. Mm-hmm. So. I had, you know, before we we left, I went to my girl Sala. I had my, my blonde. She blew it out. It was amazing. Shout out to the real Sala J. The real Sala J, who has an amazing TikTok. So if you just need entertainment, just go find her on TikTok. Um, and if you need your hair done, just go to her to do your hair as well. Um, do both. Watch her TikTok while and she's doing while your she's hair. While she's doing your hair, yeah. Um, so... I, I'm thinking I'm about to be cute in Ghana right now. My hair's done. Got my little baby. I promise you, I took one step out of the plane onto the, the, the landing of that staircase and the heat (laughs) from the armpit of hell that slapped me in the face. My, I, I could feel, I could feel the humidity attacking my hair and my hair going from this nice straight way. It was like, you know, I had some body to it, this blowout and it was just, it was just curling. Seems I, a little dramatic. No, it was, it was curling up. And the only other time that happened to me is when I went to the Dominican Republic with our cousin Shannon, who actually gave me this shirt. Shouts, shouts to Shannon. When we, it was the same situation. Actually, no, it was deceitful. There was a walkway, but it's, the walkway was so hot because it was not air conditioned. And I was like this. Whew. So the West Indies and West Africa just y'all be ready for that heat smack. <laughs> just, just go, go in prepared for a heat smacking. Don't say I didn't warn you. Other than that, great experience. Um, I can't wait to go back to Ghana yeah. when the world opens up and take David and just show him everywhere. And it'll be nice to go to Ghana for a reason that's not a funeral because yes. unfortunately, every time I've gone, it's because of a funeral. So I'm really excited to go and be a tourist in my homeland and do that with my husband, the person I'm married to, the person I have created this marriage with, this wonderful, beautiful, artistic marriage. Yeah, so Jessica and our oldest, Solace, have been to Africa twice. Twice. I have been zero times and our, our youngest sovereign, seeing as she was born uh, in 2020, she has not been either. So I, I feel I feel good now that I'm not the only member of this family who hasn't been. Technically, she's been. Okay. Because she was an egg. No. <laughs> no, you're forcing in, it. In my body. So Force. Anywhere I've been, she's reach. been. It's a reach. 
I'm just saying. It's a reach. I'm just, I'm just um, saying. Before we, we get into, uh, before we get to our first break, which is coming up shortly, um, I do want to go ahead and acknowledge the fact that we're recording this on Monday, January 18th. 18th. Um, which is Martin Luther King. King Day. Junior Day. And uh, just wanted to acknowledge that and obviously, um, you know, pay homage and, and pay respects to uh, one of the greatest humans to walk this earth, but also uh, just a significant and um, powerful voice for the civil rights movement Absolutely. Um, that took place in this country. And, um, you know, just just kind of celebrate you know, his life and, and his legacy. So I don't want to go into this long diatribe, uh, but there's, uh, I, I told a story on one of our first podcasts about how it was, I was in elementary school and I had to do a project um, for on Black Tupac. History Month and we had to choose somebody, an idol, and I chose Tupac. And I'm not going to go into the story again, I promise, but my, uh, my dad uh, basically told me that I couldn't pick, couldn't pick Tupac. And I ended up landing on Malcolm X. But, uh, you know, it's anytime you have a, a black history project and you have to highlight a figure, uh, a famous black figure from, from American history, you know, he's Dr. King. He's always one of the first who's selected and rightfully so. Um, you just look at the impact and the fact that his words, uh, a lot of the speeches and, and a lot of quotes that are taken from him still ring true today. Um, and in a sense, you know, black people in this country are still fighting for some of the things that he was fighting for. Yeah. Uh, back during the civil rights movement. So um, I think that's a sign that, you know, obviously the, there's still work to be done. Um, he said he wouldn't get to the mountaintop with us and we're not there yet either. But, um, you know, I just really uh, appreciate that he still has a lasting impact on um, American culture uh, and, and I think world worldwide, honestly. So, um I just wanted to go ahead and acknowledge that and I'll pay my pay my respects to the late great and um if you wanted to say anything. Absolutely. I uh I definitely rocks with uh Dr. King Jr. He visited Ghana. Um so that's uh, that's very important to me. So even if he did nothing else, he, he went he to Ghana, Ghana, so he would still get some well, love there, and, right? And <laughs> and the reason why that's important is because when Ghana was seeking independence and Kwame Nkrumah became the first president. You know, he was very, there are a lot of African American individuals through history who, you know, contributed to Ghana. Um, W.E.B. Du Bois moved to Ghana. Um, Maya Angelou lived there for a little bit. A uh, little known fact, she's not African American, but Shirley Temple was an ambassador to Ghana. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I heard that once and I just was so fascinated. So now I, I, I think of, Shirley Temple. Thank you for sharing that during our, um, our tribute to Dr. But, King. But you know, yeah. Louis Armstrong visited Ghana, and so it, it, I, I, I love being able to bridge that gap, and I, I think it's just amazing that you know, with everything that he was fighting here in terms of civil rights, he still was able to find life, that time in his life to you know travel abroad and be a part of celebrating our independence and being the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence um, from its colonizers. So uh, that's just a big deal to me, among other amazing things that Dr. King did. So that um, I just appreciate him as an individual. And I feel like, you know, as a little black kid growing up in America, he's one of the first significant black people you learn about, um, then followed by Jackie Robinson. Um, but I, I, do, I do appreciate this day and, you know, I encourage if you're a parent, if you know a kid, just make sure you you make sure they understand the importance of Dr. King. Whether you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, uh, his contribution to the world has affected every race. So that's our that's our kingly shout. For sure. And I think that's. Good timing because I think we can take a break before we get into our next segment in which we will absolutely tear each other apart. Like, <laughs> I should have put like I thought about putting eyeliner under my eye and like for war makeup. Yeah, that would have been a bit much. All right, we'll be right back. We're gonna take a quick break. 
So we're back. And we're back. And um, my lead in, I said we were getting ready to tear each other apart after we got done. <laughs> it's about to be on Talking about Dr. Poppin'. King. And now he preached unity. And I don't know if, if we're going to uphold, if we're going to meet that standard. I should have got plexiglass. <laughs> plexiglass. To separate. Um, so, as mentioned, if you tuned in to episode seven, our last episode, mm-hmm. we ended and said that we were going to discuss a topic that we um, stumbled upon. Uh, while we were recording one of our test episodes back in some some point this summer. I think it was August. Yeah, back in August. So I uh, don't know what we were talking about. I think I we made... We talking about entanglement. Talking about the entanglement between Jada Pinkett Smith and uh, August... And Will. And Will. Uh, and I think I made an offhand comment in that, well, you know, marriage is difficult. No. Okay. You said marriage is hard. No, I said marriage is difficult. Okay, fine. We'll go back and listen to it. Well, whatever. I know where we had, where we met the peak of our disagreement. I was stating that marriage is difficult. And Jessica obviously uh, rebuffed that. She said, no, it's not. And then I said, well, yes, it is. And then it kind of went back and forth. And then we just ended. And, and talked to him for the rest of the night. And she didn't talk to me for the rest of the night. So I also mentioned how Jessica went on to a, another podcast and was basically uh, tearing me to shreds as to how upset she was with me and how she took offense to the fact that I could say that marriage was difficult and blah, 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 blah. Notice this was another podcast. I was not there to defend myself. He so didn't need to defend it, was a little, it was a little unfair uh, that she would go to such lengths <laughs> to destroy her. This is not her, slander. Her husband. Like, calm down. Uh, when he was not there to defend himself. So we have always known that this is a topic we wanted to touch on because like I said, or like we've said all along, you know, we're going to, we're going to touch on a range of things on this podcast, current affairs, relationship, marriage, things, um, and then also things that are happening in Charlotte. So this is finally, we're, we're hitting uh, a very hot button relationship themed topic. And the question that we are going to debate is, is marriage difficult? So, sweetheart, I will allow you to go first because I know if I go first, you're only going to interrupt me before I have an opportunity <laughs> to make my point. So I will. I I actually I will give I you. I think you should go first. No, I think you should. Oh, you go first because you're the one who thinks marriage is difficult. So you need. No, to... I I would prefer. I'm being a gentleman here. Should no, I want you to go dead. first. So when I say marriage is difficult um normally when i listen to the podcast that you were on and when i listen to the responses that you were giving me when we had our discussion on the on the test podcast it seemed as if you thought it was uh an indirect attack right like almost a character assassination on you and and if that were the case then yeah, absolutely anybody would be offended and anybody would be upset if they thought that their partner was saying that they are difficult But the problem is, and where I want to draw a distinction, is that there is not only one person in a marriage, right? There's two. So when you think about marriage, it's two people coming together and then growing usually as one. And in that process, two people have to grow. So me saying that marriage is difficult doesn't mean that it's 100% of the difficulty is stemming from Jessica. What it means is that- Anyways, no, because no, because in the podcast you said, so what are you saying that I'm difficult? And then there are a couple of ladies who co-sign with you. Um, and I don't remember the names. Otherwise I'd call them out, but I don't. So I'll just say ladies to, to be peaceful. And I know y'all, y'all, uh, y'all the godly women, you got a mean streak side to you. So I don't, I don't even want to, I don't want to cause any of those problems, but that sanctified petty. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I remember specifically you saying that like, so what are you saying? I'm difficult. And so I think if you look at, the statement marriage is difficult and you say, oh, well, that just means he's saying I'm difficult, then I think you're wrong. And then I also think that that's slightly narcissistic because you are not the only person in the marriage. Now, I use the analogy when I was in college and I was on the football team, I came in 140 pounds soaking wet and I said, hey, I want to, I want to eventually 
get to the point where I can start on this football team because and I come here to sit on the bench. So I had to go through a process of lifting weights. I had to lift more than all the other people lifted because they, everybody had an advantage on me in terms of their, their muscle size, their mass, their strength or whatever. And that process was grueling. It was extremely difficult. I had to get up before class, lift, lift in the middle of the day, go to practice, maybe lift after practice or do some workouts after practice. So the entire process of becoming one stronger and bigger and faster and then just a better overall football player was difficult. But throughout that process, I saw I saw progress. Right? I got my shoulders got wider. My arms got bigger. I got faster. I got better. And I loved every bit of it. But the road getting from where I came into to where I wanted to end up was extremely difficult, but it was worthwhile. So it doesn't mean I hated everything about it. It just meant that I, it was hard work and that it was difficult, but it was a worthwhile thing to go through because I myself was growing. I was changing. I, I, I noticed myself becoming smarter. I noticed myself becoming better. So if I'm to bring that analogy back to marriage, me as an individual, when I got married, I was 26. I was very immature. I didn't really quite understand what it meant to be a husband and sacrifice, you know, yourself, die to yourself and put, you know, God your wife and your children for your, your own needs and wants and desires and getting to the point where I'm at 33 now. And that's literally my mindset from the moment I wake up. That has been a difficult process. And that's just from my standpoint, like I've had to go through a pruning process. I've had to go through a molding and shaping process. And that is extremely difficult, but I, you know, I through all, all that hard work that I've had to put in and through all difficult moments where, I've gotten frustrated with you and you've gotten frustrated with me. But in the end, we always come back together and try to figure out what the issue was. And so we actually learn from those moments. We learn from those difficult moments. Um, It's put us, uh, our marriage at a different level. And if it weren't for those difficult moments, if it weren't for the difficult process, we wouldn't value it as much as we do. I wouldn't value you as much as I do. And I feel like you wouldn't value me as much as I do. And I wouldn't value myself as much as I do. So I think absolutely marriage is difficult because like I said, you're bringing two people together who were raised in different households, had different upbringings, may have been from different social classes. And then you introduce kids into the mix and then you have to, I have to not only say, okay, this is how I want to parent, but I also have to agree with how you want to parent. We have to come together and raise one person the same. That is difficult. I know it's difficult. I live that every single day because you let the, you let these little girls get away with murder. And I come down, I try to say like, no, nah, don't put stuff on the floor. He's like, oh, why don't you just let them put this stuff on the floor? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So let alone the individual development and the struggles of that and the difficulty of that, you then on top of that have to come together and decide how you're going to raise children when you, if you have children in a marriage, because I know not every marriage, you know, children are a part of every family. Um, so all that, like it's just constant um, development. It's constant uh, uh, self-reflection. It's constant conversations, difficult conversations. Um, so to me, the idea of all of that and acknowledging how difficult it is, I think also helps me appreciate it more because if I thought it was just, oh, if it was just easy, I'd be out here, you know, blah, 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 and not really putting in effort to get better every single day or to understand you whenever we have a misunderstanding. So I don't make the same mistake twice, mistake proofing our marriage. So I just want to say that me saying that marriage is difficult wasn't a slight at you in any sense. Um, if so, it was more so about what I've had to go through um, and the development I've had to make uh, and the growth that I've had to experience to get to the point where I am now. Yeah. It's been tough having to adjust to, someone who was raised in a completely different culture than I was, that was, that was difficult. Um, <clears throat> and understanding that I can't, it can't always be, Oh, she's wrong just because she's coming at it from a different vantage point. Um, that, that takes work and that takes growth and that takes the ability to, to look at yourself and how you may have handled certain situations and arguments and say, ah, I didn't really get that right. Like it's like anybody can say they screwed up, but it's, Not everyone can say, you know, man, I really screwed up and actually like try to train themselves so they don't make that mistake again. Like it's easy to say, ah, I screwed up, but 
to actually take receipt of it, take let it take root, and then actually help that make you a better person, so you don't end up in that that situation in the future. I think that is extremely difficult. Um, Self accountability is like it's not common. So all of that kind of goes into goes into marriage. So to circle back, that's not me. Me saying marriage is difficult doesn't mean that you yourself are difficult. It just means that I see the entire process as difficult, but just as equally worthwhile in every single moment. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. So um, for anybody who feels like, especially to the women who you were on your podcast with, who, who took offense to it, I say one, like I said, check your narcissism level because it's sort of narcissistic. If I, if you hear marriage is difficult and the first thing you say is, Oh, he's saying I'm difficult. No, that's not what I'm saying. Um, and if that's what you got out of it, you might want to, I want to, you know, just chew on it a little bit. Uh, but that all the individual little pieces that go into it, into the process of marriage, can make it difficult. So that was all I had to say. Thank you, David. I don't know why you had to do that loud slurping thing because now I have to edit that out. So you don't have to. Edit yes, that I do. That's for emphasis. Bad etiquette. Um, I appreciate the audacity of your incorrectness in terms of your opinion of marriage. Okay. So. You see, God, or God don't like ugly. That's in letting you know. No, God does. God likes what I'm about to say because I'm about to defend. His creation as soon as I can find. (laughs) There we go. We're back in business. So this gentleman to my left, whom I'm allegedly married to, said marriage is difficult. And I took great offense to this. And maybe it's how I was raised, my cultural perspective, just my overall opinion. I personally don't find marriage to be difficult. I enjoy being married. I enjoy most of the time the person I'm married to. When David said marriage is difficult, I took offense to it for two two reasons. One, I won't I I'm very particular about the association of words to things. So I try to be very intentional about the words I use to describe things, to describe people, especially with our daughters, um, more so solace because she's, she's of that consuming information age. So to hear marriage is difficult. I, one, I did take offense to it because I thought he was saying being married to me is difficult, not in a narcissistic type of way. Though, you know, based off of his explanation, it seems like he thinks that I think I'm a narcissist. I'm not. But, um, excuse me, I'm speaking because it's my turn to speak. So this is the problem. This I was is why, quiet the whole is, this time. This is why I wanted you to you go went first. You on your little marriage yeah, tangent. This is why I now wanted I'm you, need to, you to sit there this and is hush. Why, this is, hush, you're being difficult. This is why I wanted you, you are to being go first. Difficult. Because I knew you were going to twist my words. I didn't say you that are being you were being difficult. narcissistic. I said that there may be an element of narcissism there if that's the only this is you or the prominent message that and you this got is from why, what I was saying. This is why you think marriage is difficult because you as an individual are difficult. I, I don't like the word difficult being the main definition of marriage for you. And that's why I took offense to it. In my opinion, marriage is not difficult. Marriage is amazing. Marriage is fun. Marriage is joyful. Marriage has moments that are difficult. Marriage has elements that are difficult. But marriage as an entity is not difficult. And I think as married, as a married couple, as a millennial married couple, as a millennial black married couple, we, it is our defaulted responsibility to be an example of marriage to other people. So I enjoy when people come and say like, I want what you have and people don't want what you have. If it is perceived as something that 
isn't attainable, that is difficult. So, you know, I think it's insulting to call marriage difficult because there's so much more to marriage than the difficult moment. You know, yes, we may have an argument and in that argument, it was difficult. We may have an obstacle that we have to come overcome. And in that it was difficult, but the entity of our almost seven year marriage, the whole thing is not difficult there. Again, I emphasize there are instances, there are moments that are difficult being a woman just as an individual we have periods, we have babies. We, I mean, we go through things, hormonal changes. Those moments are difficult, but overall being a woman is great. So I apply that same vision towards marriage. I like being married. I like having a partner. I like having a friend and I could not, to me, it's offensive to what we have built together, to what we have. Don't shake your head. (laughs) <laughs> to what we have for it to be classified as difficult. And I think it, it, it almost hurts me because you use it. It's like when you define marriage, it's marriage hyphen difficult. That's how you described it. You're, you're, you, but when you were talking about it, you were talking about the different things that are difficult within a marriage. And that's really what I wanted you to take a moment and really reflect on because it seems like you take the, the multiple moments that are complicated, that are, that are difficult in a marriage. And you're using that to define the whole thing. And if you look at it from, you know, a biblical perspective, there is nothing in the Bible when God created the, this institution of marriage that was intended to be, difficult. The, the, it's, it's a partnership. It's for you to have someone that you build with, that you grow with, that you, you know, you have a family. Like I think of all the things that we've accomplished in our marriage and yes, some of those things were difficult to attain, but we did it together. And because we did it together, that's why we are strong where we are here almost seven years in. It was difficult for us to get this house. Heck, it was difficult for us to get married. It was difficult for us to build this house. It was difficult for, you know, us to make it through our first year, but we did. It was difficult having our first child. It was difficult having our second child. We've had moments of difficulty, but that's not what defines our entire marriage. Our marriage is beautiful. And I think if you go around saying, not necessarily just you, but if you say marriage is difficult, You have all these people, millions of people who are getting on dating apps and, you know, trying to get into marriage because they want marriage because they've seen the positive side of it. So if you're going around saying marriage is difficult and that's your first word using your, the first words you use to define this, this partnership, it's almost I feel it. it's off putting. Like, why do I want to put myself into this? If it's difficult, why do I want to attach myself to someone for the rest of my life? If it's just going to be difficult, but there's so much more that goes into it than what is difficult. There is love. There is joy. There is laughter. There is friendship. There's, there, there's just so much. And I think that's why I'm offended when I hear marriage is difficult because for me, marriage is not difficult. I went into marriage knowing there will be moments that it's going to be, you know, it's going to be difficult. There will be moments where we won't get along. There will be moments where I annoy you. There will be moments, moments where you annoy me. There will be moments where we clash, but there will also be those moments will be so overwhelmed by the joy that we have, the laughter that we share. So that's, as, as being a married couple and feeling like we're supposed to be an example to other married couples as well as singles, I just think it's wrong to say marriage is difficult. And, you know, I also, man, I had a point and I lost it. Mm, damn. Sucks. I also, it's almost oh, like I got it back. I think marriage is marriage for some people can be difficult if you marry the wrong person. If you have the wrong idea 
of what marriage is supposed to be. If you have the wrong foundation of what marriage is, then marriage can be difficult. Like if you build, you know, a marriage on the foundation of sex, you know, your relationship before you got married was based on sex and then you get married and you think it's all about sex. And then all of these things that come into it, you know, you have kids, you you're working, you're tired. All of these elements can affect, you know, that intimacy that you built your relationship on. So then it becomes difficult because now you have to build a relationship that or rebuild a relationship that was founded on one ideal. So it marriage can be difficult if you go about it the wrong way. If you don't go about marriage the way it's intended to to create a partnership to create a friendship that leads to a partnership that leads into, you know, a lifelong relationship. So that's that's just how I feel. I respect your opinion. I I just think in terms of the word usage, I don't like the word usage that you choose because you are saying as a whole, marriage is difficult. And as a whole, marriage is not difficult. When you when you see couples who have been together 50, 60 years and you talk to them about, you know, tell us about your marriage, give us tips. I I I've never heard any of them say flat out marriage is difficult. I I've heard them say, you know, through it all, we, we made it, we stuck together. We remembered it was the two of us, you know, all that, that, that corny stuff. Um, but I've never heard them flat out say marriage is difficult because I think the expectation is yes, it's cool. You're going to have in everything you're going to have hard moments, but as a whole, it is not hard. So I'm going to let you rebuttal. All right. Let's take a quick break so I can uh, rebut and then we can uh, Fight. We can close it out. We'll be right back. All right. We're back. And we're back. Um, so there are a number of things that uh, I would disagree with that you said. And I want to just be clear. We love each other. Do we? We are we are each other's <laughs> best friends, this confidants, lovers. Um, we've stolen some things together, so what? like we're <laughs> no, we haven't stolen anything except each other's hearts. I was I try to get deep, um, but I think this is also very healthy uh, in marriage. To it's healthy to have disagreements, but it's also healthy to talk those disagreements out. So um, we may not agree on this at the end of the podcast. I'm pretty sure we won't, um, but it, it has right, no right. bearing on, on how we feel about one another. Lies, With totally that does. being said, <laughs> this is about before, to be a difficult moment. Before I mute your channel, um, where did you want to go to college? Like, what was your number one college choice? I... I was torn between Syracuse and Northeastern. Did you go to either one of those? No. Why not? Because <laughs> academically, <laughs> I was a. Uh, it was alleged that mm. I wasn't on their level. Oh, so you you would. It would be fair then to say that they, it was a high level of performance that was required to get accepted by these schools. Absolutely. Um, and seeing as you didn't attain those levels, I would assume that it was kind of difficult. Otherwise you would have done it, right? No. No? So why didn't you why didn't you get there? I had a lot of competitors, oh, competitive okay. peers. So there are a lot of and we'll we'll still we'll stay on the subject of in the example of college, right? I mean you could name a top college or a top university, um, Harvard, MIT, Yale, Warden. A lot of these schools, the creme de la creme of universities here, um in, in, in the country and probably some of them even in the world, right, uh, are very difficult to get into because they have very high standards. So when a kid say, you're my daughter and I'm your father and you say, daddy, I want to go to MIT because you grew up in Massachusetts, I would say, well, okay, sweetie, but you're going to have to work really hard. It's going to be a difficult process. It's not easy to get into. That doesn't mean I'm trying to smash your dreams and say, no, you shouldn't try to get into MIT. I'm just trying to let you know that if you want to get to the top, if you want to be 
at one of the creme de la creme of universities in the world, it's going to be a very difficult process. That doesn't mean when you get there, like, oh, this is terrible. Like, this is horrible. Life sucks. My teachers suck. My professor sucks. A process or a, a, a entity, a relationship can be difficult, but that does not mean you don't have great moments and you don't have success within it. Difficult is just one label that I've given. I know nowhere did I say marriage is difficult and marriage is only difficult and marriage is nothing else. Marriage can be difficult and marriage can still be fun and loving and respectful and great. And you can experience a lot of growth in it. So that's one of the things I want to push back on. You were like, no, marriage is great. Like we have fun. We did this. We did that. And yes, all that can happen within like the moniker of marriage being difficult. And I have spoken to people who have said, yeah, if you want to get, if you want to get to where we've gotten 50 years, 60 years, been married, it's a lot of hard work, but it's going to be challenging. You're going to have to reinvent yourself every few years. That's not eat Like reinventing yourself is not easy to do. That's why NBA superstars bow out of the league because they don't know how to reinvent themselves because, you know, it's difficult, but the ones who are able to do it, Kind of like Vince Carter, my favorite basketball player of all time. Um, it was very difficult for him to make the shift in his mind to go from I'm an all NBA player. I'm a number one option on my team to being, hey, I'm going to be a bench warmer, but I'm going to be a six man. I'm going to mentor these guys. That's difficult. But you ask Vince Carter and he it was worth it to him because he loved the game ultimately. So he went through those difficult moments. So nowhere, no in, in no world do I think that marriage is only difficult. I was just saying that it is because there's a lot of there's a lot of just think about the day to day, like the things that, that tug on you, things that pull on you, the things that you have to balance and the things that you have to to weigh and decide. Like. I just I just feel like all of it is very difficult, but when you get through it and when you see yourself make certain progressions, like when you when 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 you put to bed childish behaviors or bad habits. Like those things aren't easy to do, but if you do them for the benefit of your marriage, like addictions, um, bad relate, bad friendships, bad relationships, when you put those things to bed for the benefit of your your marriage and your relationship, that's a difficult thing to do. But it's for the it's for the greater good, and you can go to a different and you can go to a different level, and you you don't have those things weighing you down. Um, and if we're going to speak biblically, which I don't really want to do, but yeah, God may not have intended marriage to be. Described as difficult, but he ain't also intend for us to know we was naked neither. And here we are. So it's one thing what God intended, and it's another thing what actually is. So I just wanted to, that to be my rebuttal. Um, but in all that, I do agree with you that um, you know if 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 you and I were uh, this is not something we do, but if we were like counseling. Like a couple that was preparing. But we will do it for the right fee. No, we won't. Uh, because I don't want to scare anybody off. Uh, if we were counseling a young couple who was, you know, thinking about getting married, you know, they probably would be, they probably would second guess if the first thing we said was difficult. But you know what? If you're, if you tell somebody, if some, if somebody really wants something, then they're willing to go through whatever they have to go through to attain it, to get there. Um, and anything in this life worth having is, is worth working your ass off for in marriage included and including once you're actually in marriage, because it's one thing it's like, what's the, what's the quote from Hamilton? Like, uh, winning is easy. Like leading is harder. Governing is harder. Like getting, like anybody can get married, but to keep it, to keep it fresh, to keep it interesting, to grow both yourself and then grow with somebody, um, that is that is hard work and that is that is difficult that is not easy and nor should it be right because that means like like if i just sit here i'm like oh man you know i just i just get up just cooks me breakfast you know i come down i kiss her on the cheek i go up i go back to work every once in a while you know what i'm saying you know um you know i toss the kids around for a little bit just so they get some they know i'm here you know life's a breeze kick my feet up babe can i get a refill like that's not going to last long. Like when I get up every single day, I need to be better than I was the day before. And that's a standard you hold me to. That is difficult. I had to get used to that for damn sure, but it's made me better. And there are still moments 
when I fall short of your expectations because they are up here. And to meet those expectations every single day is difficult. But you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. And that's something I enjoy because when I, when I, not only when I meet, but when I exceed, like when you come home and you're like, oh, I didn't know that you were going to clean the hole downstairs. Like, oh my gosh, like it's been a long day. I've had both these kids like that. And it, and, and, and it probably wasn't easy for me to get, cause I don't clean no damn dishes. I didn't even put, I probably only put like 10% of the dishes in the kitchen anyway. So for me to clean 100% of them, that seems slightly unfair. But you know what? That's not the point I'm trying to make. When I, go, when I meet or go above and beyond, that is the best feeling in the world. To surprise you, not with, with a car, not with a little, a little lap dog, not with the purse. But you're welcome to do all these things. <laughs> when I do something simple and it completely blows you away, um, something that I know I didn't want to do, but I got myself up and I did it anyway. Because I know ultimately, no matter how I'm feeling in that moment, it's going to make you feel a million times better. It was difficult, but it was worth it. The payoff was worth it. So I'm not by no means am I stopping at saying marriage is difficult. Marriage is difficult. Yes. But if you stick with it and you constantly put your all into it and you realize that it's, it's a two person thing and not just what I want, it's me, me, me. Marriage is, is awesome. But it's also difficult because it's a lot of work. And anything, if you're going to attain anything that's difficult, it requires a lot of work. You didn't get into Syracuse. You didn't get into the other, the other school because your grades weren't where they needed to be. They didn't meet the level that was required by those schools. I wanted to go to UNC, Chapel Hill, UNC Chapel Hill. And then when they told me, <laughs> they told me what the academic requires, about, I was like, nah, you know what? <laughs> you didn't even try? <laughs> like, I'm good. I said, I didn't, I didn't want it because it was tough. It was difficult. I ran away from it. So obviously I didn't want it bad enough. I, this marriage, I want it bad enough. So through the difficult, through the difficulty, the difficult moments, however you want to phrase it, however you want to package it, I'm going to be here day in and day out and I'm going to go through it because it's worth it to me. So, like, I don't want, I don't want anybody listening to this, get it twisted. I definitely don't want you getting it twisted. I'm not saying marriage is difficult and marriage is only difficult, but I do believe, yes, it's difficult, but it's also fun. It's also enjoyable. It can add years to your life or it can take years off your life. It just depends on. <laughs> the way you got not, me feeling right now, I'm hoping not it's the, just deducting. That's not my situation. I'm just saying it could be somebody's situation out there. Um, but I will, I will, I will have, you know, that there are a couple of people I bounced this idea off of, and it was, was, was one of the test episodes that we sent out and there were, I think everybody I sent it to or has their opinion of, they sided with you. So I'm probably in the minority on this. I have no problem with that. I'm a minority anyway. So it's like, it, it just fits, you know? Um, but I, I actually have nothing wrong with having a, uh, a fringe opinion, but you know, it's marriage. It's, so it's, it's, tough, it's tough and it's, 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 it's a lot of work and I equate a lot of work with difficult because there's never been anything I had to put a lot of work into that wasn't difficult. So if we went against semantic, that's one thing, but, um, I absolutely think it is, but it's, it's 1 million percent worth it. And I can't imagine myself not being married and just kind of being aimless and jumping from you know, woman to woman relationship to relationship. Anybody can do that. I mean, that's, that takes no sense of commitment or, or um, uh, self-understanding or self-growth. Anybody can do that and just date around for the rest of their life. But to, to settle down, commit yourself to another human being, say, I'm going to commit to getting better every single day. I'm going to commit to growing with you in addition to working on myself. Um, I'm willing to bring life into this world with you and help mold and shape them so that they can you know, be a gift to, to the world and then that they can maybe potentially one day have kids of their own and do the same thing. Like that's, that's not an easy thing to do. That's not an easy commitment to make. And you can tell by the, by the divorce rate in this country. So I'm not trying to be part of that 80%. Um, and I think by recognizing how hard it's going to be to stay out of that 80% is what keeps it is part of what drives me to, uh, to keep us out of it. So, like I said, I didn't necessarily want us to like somebody to wave the white flag say, you know what, David, you're right. Marriage is difficult. Marriage is difficult. And I didn't want you to, and I didn't want to say, oh, you know what, honey, I don't think marriage is difficult. But I did want to allow us to have an opportunity to have a conversation. Because I don't know that I, 
express myself uh, as thoroughly as I did tonight. And um, these were this was during the test episode, so I think I was low key still being rude and, and disrespectful. So I wanted to have an opportunity to do that where I wasn't. Um. So yeah, do you have a rebut for my rebut? I do, as a matter nah, of fact. No, we ain't got no time. Um, <laughs> Actually, man, we don't. Yeah, we don't have no time. Oh, here, going uh, on these but, monologues. So, to end on a on a happy note. No, I st- I need I no, need no, no, no. I need like to end a end minute. on no to end on a happy note. Um, something happened this weekend. Uh, and instead of you know being gracious, you know, acting like she's been here before, acting like. You know, she didn't go high. She went low. So for those of you who know me, you can follow me on social media. I've had a longstanding opinion uh, that tacos, trash and overrated uh, and and not good. And um, I've had that opinion for a very long time, much to the to the angst of seemingly everyone in the world. I have no idea why everyone is so defensive. One, about what somebody else thinks or what somebody else, somebody else's preferred food. But also just tacos like like it was about to be a civil war like at my front door i felt like them was just gonna roll up in here and be like how do you not like tacos and like slap me with a tortilla um but i had that opinion but this weekend uh jessica made what kind of tacos did you make chicken birria tacos yeah what she said she made some she made some saturday night sunday sunday night excuse me holiday weekend stomach off uh she made some sunday night she was like, do you want some tacos? And I was like, and you know what? All right, I'll try some tacos. Because she that was all she made. I didn't feel like making a bologna sandwich, <laughs> a ham sandwich, or eating bananas because I don't cook. Um, and I didn't feel like breaking out the, the kids' chicken nuggets and putting them in the air fryer. Uh, so I was like, I have some. And you know, to my surprise, that they're very good. They're very delicious. So much so that I've requested them again today. So you're probably wondering is where did Jessica's um, ugliness come out and, and where was she being... Um, not not fair to her husband. I actually put it on social media and let the world know, not the world, but my 700 friends or the 70 who actually see my posts because I know my Facebook. Uh, I said, I, ha- I have a confession to make. I had some tacos and they were very delicious. And then of course, just out of, like, out of the woodwork, everybody happened to see it and everybody commented, oh, I told you so, oh, I told you so. And I was, I was going to take it. You know what I'm saying? Because as a man, I can admit when I was slightly wrong, and I'll, I'll, I'll clarify on the, I'll clarify on the slightly no, here in a little bit, um, but I'm you know I put it on and I was I was doing the ha ha emoji to people who were you know saying funny stuff and whatever and gifts and memes or whatever. But I happened to look on there and I noticed my wife commented like three or four times, and this chick snapped pictures of me while I was eating the tacos and put them on Facebook, unbeknownst to me. Now normally I wouldn't have a problem with it. But I just washed my head. <laughs> so my, my hair was just all poofy. It was a mess. And she put on, she put not only once, she put three pictures up. Today. And she didn't even give me heads like, yo, I'm about to put these pictures up. No. Like it would have been, it would have been nice to get like a little heads I up. I guess that's because marriage is difficult. That makes no sense. So, but the reason why I said slightly wrong is because I said I had tacos and they were delicious, meaning the tacos that I had were delicious. That does not mean that all tacos are delicious. So most of my stance is still the same. The exception being the tacos that I had Sunday and today. So for all y'all who are, who are gloating in my comments, please believe I'm still team no tacos. But the saying is the exception that proves the rule. So that was what I went through this weekend. But I don't appreciate you hanging me out to drive like that. It's not cool. Someone had to. In a ca- brief moment. We need counseling. I'm about to mute We you. do need counseling. I'm about to mute uh, do not mute me. <laughs> we do need counseling because I need someone to help you realize that even in your own definition, you are quite frankly saying marriage has difficult moments. No. I need you to take take the time to acknowledge that marriage just has difficult moments, but as an entity in itself, it is not I think one of the things that you can use to describe a long, sustained, healthy marriage is difficult. You can add other things into it. It does not have to be one single thing and one single thing only. Uh, But I 
I just, it is my it is my belief based on my own observations, both in my own and, and, and other marriages that I've seen over the course of my life, that difficult is a very real aspect um, and element and description of marriage. But like I said, but no, even but, in what you said, element, it's a, yeah, it's there, a, it's well, a contributor, can't, it can't but be. you are making it like the main no, I'm not. defining fact. Yes, you, no, you I'm not. I'm literally saying, are. No. So literally, I said, and that's what I said, upsets me no. because you say marriage is difficult. So no. I could say, so I could say, you, you know, you are difficult. So you know how, like, uh, when Black Lives Matter was was out this summer, mm-hmm. and people were saying, no, it's Black Lives Matter too. It's not only Black Lives Matter, but the two is understood. Obviously, so marriage is difficult too. No, obviously there are other there. Are, you could describe marriage as other things. I'm not saying marriage is only difficult. Marriage is difficult, but marriage is fun. Marriage is great. Like I said, marriage. So why can wouldn't add. you lead with the positive? Why would you lead with the negative? Because I don't necessarily because see. I don't see. This is this is the problem, and this is the you dis, and this, are the problem. Okay, you so, are difficult. So this is this is where the disconnect is. Is you see difficult as an as a negative? I don't see it as a negative. It is a negative. No, it's not. Define difficult. So as I said. When you were trying to get into college, the schools that you were trying to get into. Bump that. No. God didn't want me there. Okay. Well, then I'm, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't argue if you're just going to, if no. you're just going to spew nonsense. So, so if the, if the standard of the school, if the standards are, are difficult to reach, that means they, you have to be on your P's and Q's. You have to be really, really good. That doesn't mean if you go, if you get into Syracuse because it's difficult to get into that it's, it's a terrible school. Like, No. So difficult doesn't mean bad. It just means you have to work at it. And it requires a lot of hard work. Like I said, when I was lifting weights, my body getting bigger and my chest, you know, getting some definition and my abs, you know, being defined and nice and shiny and hard. That was a difficult thing. But that doesn't mean my abs are ugly and my abs are horrible or my shoulders being wider or my body looking how I wanted to look. That doesn't mean I'm just depressed. Like, Something being difficult doesn't automatically mean that it's bad, and nor, nor do I know that it necessarily means it's bad at all. It just means that it's hard to get, which means it's not for everybody, which means you've really got to put in effort and hard work to get it. So if you want to see difficult as a negative, that is fine. It that is, is negative. Sure. That's for you in your box, in your bubble. That's if for you. you put your that's difficult for you, hand down. <laughs> that's for you to believe that's fine I'm, but you don't get to tell but I, you i do get no to you tell don't you. you don't get to tell me since what, i'm in this difficult marriage with you i get to tell you look you're going all i'm saying is that i hear you forgive me i think marriage is beautiful mm-hmm. i think marriage is an amazing so accomplishment i'm speaking where two people decide that they are going to commit their lives mm-hmm. to each other Mm-hmm. despite all the things that are against them. Sure. I think marriage, because I appreciate marriage and because I was fortunate, because I thought I was fortunate enough to marry whom I thought was an amazing man. I want that for other women. Well, I, I want that for other couples. I want not saying that what we have is perfect, but I know the foundation. I know what we have together. So I want other people to enjoy that as well. So I see marriage as a gift. I see marriage as greatness. I have a, I may have a friend that I can depend on when something good happens. This is the first person I want to tell when something bad happens. This is the person I want to go to for comfort. This, this person is my, my everything. And with that person, I have, we have created new life and we've added to another generation. And that to me is beautiful. This is what I want for my single girlfriends. This is what I want for my friends who happen to be in marriages mm-hmm. that are not healthy. Literally talking but, in circles. Just, just, just sit there. I never said, sit there. I agree. With, I, I, I literally agree with your everything you're saying. I didn't interrupt your monologue. You're going to sit there. You're going to let me speak. Literally agree Mr. with Mr. Difficult. Everything you're, you're saying. You're difficult. I'm agreeing you with difficult. you. I just said, I agree you're with difficult. you. You're difficult. Okay. Well, I and guess. I'm speaking. Okay. So I will not 
insult the institution of marriage and say it's difficult because as a whole, it is not. Okay. Well, that is your opinion and you are very welcome to but it because we, wrong. you are very welcome to your opinion because we live in a country that allows you to feel that way. Your opinion is wrong. Just like there are people who felt like the election was rigged. So, I mean, you know, everybody can believe what they want to believe and that's, that's fine. Um, but I do want to clarify in no way, shape or form. Do I disagree with anything that you just said? I do believe our marriage is beautiful and I do believe marriage do is, is, is awesome. And I do believe that I, I know that I have a friend, despite what everything that you just said uh, about me, uh, that I have a friend that I can rely on. And I have an amazing wife, an amazing partner who I have uh, helped bring children into this world and who I enjoy and love raising with you. So I, I, I definitely agree with everything that you just said and, in no way, shape, or form, in any of my defense, in anything that I laid out, did I say that those things can't exist inside marriage. So how I choose to describe it is is for me and is how I describe it. And if you have a problem with that, then I'm sorry. But how you describe it is a reflection of our no, it's not. marriage. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. Who, then whose marriage are you basing it off of? Who else have you been married to? What's her name? What her name is? So how 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 are, how are you making your case that <laughs> right now like how are I'm you about I, to go make her life difficult since uh, a, since apparently you have all this marriage experience with others. All right. So I think it's fair to say that we disagree, and that's oh, fine. We more than disagree, and that's fine. But this is the but, last episode. But of- <laughs> the dis- the difference I will say between me and Jessica is, despite the fact that I disagree with her, I'm not trying to to tear her down or minimize her significance in our are you our saying i'm tearing anything. you down you, you're trying to i'm not and it's tearing okay. and, you down. and it's okay i just want and I don't, you to and I'm understand not, the the no, power you want of me, your words you want me to you're using the no, first the first you want word me. that you are using to define yes, because guess what is difficult. because guess what and that is guess what that is wrong guess what guess what guess what making it to the nba is difficult getting into harvard or yale is difficult becoming president of the united states despite how easy some people have made it look is difficult becoming a United States Senator, becoming a manager, becoming a CEO, any freaking thing worth doing or any title worth attaining worth attaining moments. is no, the process in getting there is difficult. You what was the last the person process of getting to marriage was not difficult. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Our, our process to get into marriage wasn't difficult. You, you were difficult. <laughs> I think what what it boils Woo. down to is David is difficult. Woo. Okay, well then, I, okay, fine. If that makes you feel better, so if that makes you feel like don't you want, marry a difficult. No, don't, don't marry anybody named David because they're we're just difficult out here. Um, don't marry a difficult person. Anyways, so I hope y'all enjoyed this change up because in all the past episodes of Rush Vibes, you know, uh uh-huh, we've agreed with each other, um, but this is. Uh, hopefully you've seen one thing and that we can disagree. And at least while we're on camera, remain fairly cordial. I don't know what's going to happen when I turn the camera off. <laughs> it's on I may have to enter wit- on, witness like, protection. Kong. If y'all don't see me, y'all go, he going to know what here for me is, um, you know, send, you know, send the police, send, send, send for a wellness check. Y'all want to see you don't hear from me. You want to know, difficult? Um, but we've only got a couple minutes left. I so I want to go ahead and close out. Uh, we appreciate all of our new subscribers, everyone who's downloaded or listened, all of our new um, difficult friends uh, who've connected with us on social media. Please continue to do that. I believe there are going to be some graphics that'll pop up uh, either now or they, they popped pew, up at the pew. beginning. If you're watching us on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe, comment. We're in the comments. Um, and we've only gotten a handful so far, but you know, as we grow, we're definitely going to going to get in there with you guys and, and, and chop it up with you. Um, and if you're, when you're downloading, uh, from your podcast uh, platform, please be sure to rate and leave a review. We still only have two reviews if we could get like, if two people who watch this or listen to this episode could leave us a review, that would be great because um, the more reviews you get, the more uh, exposure you get when people are searching for a podcast like ours. So, And Apple um, won't accept my review because they're <laughs> if you're, difficult. If you're tuning in, that means you enjoy us. So to help others find us and enjoy us, like us as well. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can. Uh, we're on Cash App, uh, dollar sign, Rushed Vibes, R-U-S-H-D-V-I-B-E-S. So we will be back next week with maybe <laughs> with the new episode. It might just be one of us. And I think we're going to sit a little closer together just to prove that we still love each other. Maybe um, we'll sleep in the same sweetheart, bed. Sweetheart, do you have anything you'd like to add? Marriage is wonderful. Thank you for listening. I agree. If marriage you is have, wonderful. Oh, no. You stay over there with your difficult self and J-B- your difficult J-Belt, marriage. J-Belt's coming in. Um, 
If it's you have in. any feedback regarding this particular Hurry topic, up. let us know what you think. Because I want to know if there is someone out there who also thinks marriage is difficult. Convince me that marriage is just difficult. Right. And also, if you have other opinions, let us know. We appreciate you. So we I'm love Dave. you. I'm Jess. And this marriage is Russ is Vibes. We out. Love Bye. you guys. Peace. God ain't bring me this far to let me down. Thank you.